Hello guys and welcome back to episode 4 of Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. Now firstly apologies for the lack of video recently. You'll understand why when you start to see these next few episodes things are really starting to take shape but they do come at a consequence of time consuming activity. But anyway, last week we worked on the main part of the harbour and this looked absolutely amazing. I watched back the video many times and I'm so pleased with the outcome. It looks fantastic. The buildings, creations by the uh, creators, especially with Newcom's building here, it looks fantastic. But we are slowly starting to move inland into the choppy terrain, which is where things are going to get really, really difficult. But again, also really exciting so to start off this episode we're going to start on what i'm going to class as the main focal point of the marina it's this main starting point the north side and it's the part that houses the swimming pool and where a lot of you will recognize from the formula one grand prix so let's get straight into the action. Straight away we're seeing two new assets which are now going to be on the workshop. We have the Fraser Yachts by Renewcom and the side building to go along with it. And again, these are exact replicas of what you see in Monaco. And I love the pink building. I can really see this being used elsewhere. It's a beautiful building and when it's attached to the rest of the Renewcom set, wow, does it look good. It really, really does. I am so impressed with the workmanship of these assets. They are fantastic. But going back to my earlier comment, we are now, as I say, going to be attacking some of the terrain areas of the, well, of Monaco in particular. We're not going to be heading up quite soon, but we've got to, first of all, attack this little junction area, which is where the main road meets the higher tiered road that we put down last episode which goes alongside the rear side of Newcom's buildings. So using a combination of Google Maps and the overlay uh, mod which I've got the image of the background thanks to Mr Miyagi, we can combine the two and try and get this as realistic as possible and as you can see this is where we're going to really start tackling some of these choppy terrain and when I say choppy terrain it doesn't look choppy to you but when you're trying to put things down that don't quite meet the level of terrain as you can see here I'm having trouble trying to match up the curbs against the seawall so it's a lot of uh, a lot of use of the move it tool mod to really excel and get these down perfectly which we do eventually but it just takes a little bit longer which is why why these episodes aren't as fluent as perhaps other series. One to two weeks per episode is pretty much my goal. Um, if I can do it quicker, obviously I will release it. I won't hold back any episodes. But it just means that you know, you'll know you get a, a much better look. And I want to spend more time working on this rather than rushing things along and producing something that in the end I'll either go back to or I just won't be happy with it. So we're going to move on to the first tiered part of the island and what this area is here as you can see from the top left hand corner of the little image it's two tiers and unfortunately the way that the game is well the way the game runs you're not able to make such steep inclines in very small areas as you all know from the terrain tool it's not at that level it's either smooth or it's a big sort of area that's um, dropping up and down to different tiers so the best way that I thought to do this was using plumbable asphalt and it's probably the only way we can do so at the moment. So the first job, we plop down the uh, swimming pool here which we'll look into a bit more detail in a bit later. But what we're trying to achieve here, we want to use the road as the first tier. So that's the tier that's going to be the highest point so we're going to obviously follow the plumbable asphalt across there. And the bottom tier is going to be the ground tier, so to speak, for this particular build. So we're going to basically make a box out of the plop of asphalt. Um, and like I say, it's probably the only way that we can really achieve this sort of a look at the moment with the game's mechanics. But it does work out well in the end. But in the meantime, we're going to move back and we're going to plop down the second of the piers from Mick Crossill. And we're going to pretty much just copy what we see on Google Maps. And this pier I do like is a very unusual look and it's a part of the harbour that's uh, quite packed with smaller boats. So you'll see a lot more of the smaller boats plop down here a bit later on. 
Um, and it's a very different type of peer. It's not a peer that's on the workshop. Um, you could possibly make it with uh, a combination of different peers, but what I like about this is again, it's designed perfectly for um, the Monaco Harbour. So it looks ideal. And again, this harbour, well, this particular harbour would not be anywhere near possible without Mick Crosshill. Mick Crosshill created pretty much 90% of what I've plopped down for this harbour area. And not only that, but he's produced a million and one different types of boats, yachts and ships. Not just for me, but for all of us, so we can actually create a lot more realistic harbours and marinas now, which really does help. The only downside to that is it does take a lot of time to plop down a a shed loads of uh, ships and boats as you can see here um, but with the move it mod tool we can obviously save a bit of time and I'm not going to bore you with a time lapse we're going to jump into the next section so now that section's done we can go back to this two tier area on the harbour front and as you can see just for now just so we can see it a bit clearer I've put down the plobble asphalt along here. So we've got the first height. And as you can see, zooming in here, this is the bottom tier height. And this is where there are many shops and restaurants underneath. Um, not sure exactly what type they are. I'm gonna have to use a bit of my imagination, a bit of guesswork based on what I can see on uh, Google Images. But we're gonna try and create this area as best we can. And what we can do here, we have a early release of which will come a bit later on by a very special contributor to the series which I'm not going to ruin anything so unfortunately you're not going to be able to use these walls just yet but you'll find out a bit later on where they're from and you'll be able to get them yourself at that point but for now we're just going to create a wall using these because this is probably the closest that's on the workshop at the moment which kind of meets what we can see um, in real life Monaco. So you'll see that it's not perfect, but we've been able to create something very similar. So we're gonna use the walls here to fill in this area, but we're gonna combine it with um, some of the glass as well. So I wanna sort of create um, a sort of, create as best I can. I know it's not all glass um, in what you can see in real life, but it just opens things up. And I've got a clever little idea here, which we'll go into a bit later on, but something that's gonna really make this area pop and come alive. So we'll catch up with that very shortly. But in the meantime, I just wanted to sort of ask you guys and sort of find out what you think should be done next. So obviously the harbour is the main part of this first part of the series and it's gonna probably take another three or four episodes to, to really get down the main harbour parts. Um, and I'm guessing what do you guys wanna see next? Do you wanna see a bit of inland areas? Are there certain parts of the area of Monaco you want to um, see created next? Obviously it's gonna be subject to uh, what I have available in terms of custom props and assets that are still in the making. But um, I mean, I'm guessing the next thing what I would probably need us to do next is um, create some of the houses. We need to have a population here. At the moment we don't have anything. Everything we've done so far is purely cosmetics, I guess. Um, so we do want to get some people in here, we want to get some services down, we want to sort of make the area thrive a bit because I do want to um, bring this area to life um, and I've got a few ideas on how I can do that but I'm going to need to have something to keep this going so I may even just create a little offset um, town city away from the builds, you can't see it but we'll actually get some sort of, uh, well some sort of people walking around and some cars on the road just so I can sort of test a few things out. So that's one of the ideas I've got in mind, but I'll be very keen to hear what you think we should move on to next. And jumping back into the build, this is what I was talking about earlier. So I've placed some of the uh, chair sets inside this area, putting some lights in as well. So we've got a real nice sort of uh, look here at night time it just brings things to life rather than just having something there which you can't see um, I know imagination is a big part of uh, these sort of series but I think the imagination works a lot better when you can see something inside so we put some of the tray uh, chairs and tables inside and now it's just a case of copy and paste in this area over um, just to bring it to life really and that reminds me I'm not sure why but um, yeah if you're uh, an avid follower make sure you're also following on my social media platforms so we've got uh, Twitter we've got Facebook we've got Instagram 
and of course we've got the discord channel which um, you can come in ask questions give your feedback it's a friendly place to go so if you fancy it by all means drop in there's a link in the description below um, but back, in, back into the build we're now working on this staircase um, and these staircases now are made so much easier I mean for example I'm using Sparks's stair pack which um, I think it comes in two or three different varieties and the fact you can raise it up from the ground unlimited to an extent I believe makes this so much easier and then a simple copy and paste with the move it tool and well there you go an easy staircase made and it suits the area perfectly I really do like the look of this looking now in first person you can really see all the tables inside and it just looks really nice I think it really does give it a pop um, and I think these are the sort of little extra bits I love to add into my builds and if we just jump into a short nighttime view here you can see that's going to look really good when it's all done really happy of that So jumping back into the build, we've done a bit of detailing, we've got those chairs and tables in and I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking I'll end up deleting those a bit later on once we start getting close to the prop count and you're probably right, it might be something we end up doing anyway. Um, but as I said before, prop count is not saying that's on my mind just yet, obviously we're early in the series and also the harbour is going to be the biggest area that we're going to plop down um, props anyway. Um, a lot of the other areas are going to be a bit of decaling and mostly buildings so I'm hoping we can limit that and uh, complete the whole in Monaco without having any well without hitting the prop count but as we saw from Strict series it's easier said than done so we've got to be a bit careful along the way so that might be something I'll go back and tweak a little bit later on but for now I'm happy as it is so we'll leave it as it is anyway now as you can see we're starting work on the first part of the main restaurant front so we're not gonna be able to get it perfect as you all know so we're just going to create this as best we can um, we haven't quite got the fancy tents that monaco has for this but we've got this little awning building uh, i'm not sure what it's actually called to be honest but uh, it does really look good and it still does play a good part in this role now whilst I pop down these extra tables and chairs, the actual episode we're working on now uh, was actually meant to be one complete episode, but I'll let you into a bit of a secret. I actually had to do this in two parts, mostly because the recording pushed me over to more of the 50 minute mark, um, which I like my videos to be about 30 minutes. So this is almost like a two tier 
um, episode for this seafront. So we're going to be working on just the left hand side um, of the swimming pool. So this front area won't be completed until the next episode. But the good news is that episode is also pretty much complete. There's a few little bits of tidying up in terms of the actual gameplay and then editing. So I'm hoping we're going to be able to get episode episode five. That'll be now episode five out. Um, sort of a week after this one's released so that's good news we'll hopefully get things moving on there and like i say probably another two episodes after that will be needed to complete the whole of this harbour um, and then we'll start moving away so like i said earlier let me know what you want to see next and we'll uh, we'll try to head that direction now I've noticed there's been a lot of nice trees released as well. Um, not only the classic ones that we're used to seeing on the workshop from P. Delmo, Mr. Mason and Co, but there's been a few little fancy ones, um, I assume from the recent um, well, recent release of Green Cities. So these little ones in the flower pots, I think the ones with the white flower pots and bush on top are from the Green Cities and they, they work really well. Um, so I'm certainly gonna be looking to add some of those in, but I have got a treat in store for the next episode and um, we'll be putting down some nice planters and trees which um, we'll get to see very shortly and not only that but we also had a contribution from Swim Berlin of these beautiful metal chairs not only those but he also did these beautiful wooden wicker chairs as well so both of those are already on the workshop but just to remind you if you want some nice fancy chairs these are the exact replicas from this area in Monaco. So get on the workshop and download those, they are fantastic. And on that note, we're going to jump into a short time lapse whilst we plop down these chairs and tables because there are quite a lot. Catch you in a bit.
so things are slowly taking shape. But I did hit a bit of an issue here. When looking at the Google Maps, I did notice that this area wasn't really orange. It wasn't the fancy um, orange uh, brickwork. It was more sort of grey toned um, concrete. So what I thought of doing is using the proper asphalt um, to create that really. But the issue we have here, as you can see, while I'm placing these down, is the terrain is not exactly perfect. And also, when you're using roads, I'm sure a lot of you who do a lot of customized work know that the way these roads work, especially these small avenues, they create little bumps in the road. So if you were to put a standard decal over that, you'd have a little bump. So the only way of doing that is using the solid plopper asphalts and materials by Bronix, which pretty much creates a surface line. What you're able to do then, or what I did in this particular instance, is then plop that down to get a level terrain and then moved up my keys and my uh, roads to match the two together. So realistically, there is a gap still underneath, but it's hidden by the plop of asphalt. And I think that's probably the best way that we can achieve this. And it looks nice and tidy. Once you uh, raise up the uh, keys and the road themselves, you don't really think about it. It's all hidden away nicely and it does look very smart indeed. And the good thing about that is we can also place decals over the top of these as well, which we'll see a bit later on in episode five. However, I would not advise doing this if you don't have the patience. It does take a lot of time and there was a lot of um, areas that were a lot more difficult than others. It does take a lot of raising up and down using the Move It mod tool. So if you're a highly experienced user of Move It and you want to be a bit fancy, go for it. But if you haven't got the patience, it might not be best to, uh, to follow this little, um, well, follow this area. Now my mind changed many times when I was placing down these uh, pathways and decals. I wasn't sure whether to leave them as they are or use some fancy uh, pathways. The pathways do look nice but again there's always that issue when you're rotating the camera or zooming in that they disappear or start to flicker which is a pretty annoying um, which you know you can get away with it if you place them perfectly next to each other but because of the way this area is built it's not easy to do that. A lot of things are gonna to have to overlap because of the shapes of the, uh, the locations, what we've got to play with, which is a bit of a pain, but as it was at this point, we all leave it air. Now, as I mentioned in the last few episodes, the materials and sort of Google images that I have to play with in this area aren't the best. Um, and what I mean by that is I've got three sources and each one shows something different in this area. So I'm having to use a bit of my imagination along with what I can see on a few of the areas just to make things look a little bit more interesting. And this the streamlined ceiling by Hickey is one of the little tents that have come into this area on a particular location and a particular time of Monaco. I'm not saying this is here all the time, but I really liked it and I saw that on the workshop Hick had done some very nice um, different type of tents and I thought it'd be really cool to have this particular one here. So he very kindly created this one which will be on the workshop for you guys to also put into your cities. And looking on the Google Maps you can see that it has a little grass area as well so it's a very unique sort of build for this area. Obviously it gets shifted away and it's not always here but um, I like this idea. And it's basically a little sort of restaurant area, cafe area. Um, be very keen if anyone's seen this in real life and let me know exactly what it is because it is hard to work out what it is. It's got some tables and chairs in there, uh, which we're, we're replicating here. But if anyone had visited Monaco at the point of when this tent structure was there and how often it is there, it'd be very interesting to find out. I know we've got a few people watching who have visited Monaco or actually live nearby. So be very keen to hear from you guys um, a bit more about this area because it's an area that I don't really know a lot about and it's hard to do research about it. Um, like I say, because it does, chip, uh, does change quite a lot from what I can see um, from the materials I have to use to play with. Yeah, let me know guys. Let me know what this area is most of the year. And again, I really wanted to take advantage of this unique building and this unique area by adding some lights. 
And it got me thinking, I haven't really done much in terms of lights on the main harbour front. So that is something I'm going to have to go back to and add some lights there. Um, not sure how easy I'm going to sort of find out what it actually has there in real life because there's not a lot of um, images for night time. But I can certainly find out whereabouts the... Uh, the main light areas are so we need to do that because I do like the nighttime shots um, in general for city skylines really does look good um, and I do like how this textures works out um, for this tent as well from Hick it really does look good it does look like it is a tent material from the way these lights um, shine around it and I also found these uh, flashing bollards which I put down I'm not sure if I do I do like it but in my eyes it looked like there were little flashing candles just to add a bit of ambiance to this area probably will change but uh, anyway that is that so let's jump into a live view of what we've done today so far we've got this main restaurant area on the left now very nicely detailed with the plants around it and we've got this new little section here of all these beautiful Sven Berlin uh, tables and chairs and obviously Hicks nice little tent so I really do like the contrast between these two tiers I'm really pleased with how that came about and what we're missing in this corner is the little uh, I think it's a little pub I think I'm not too sure to be precise but we haven't got anything that's perfect for that so I did find these uh, Mediterranean looking buildings on the workshop and just adding a few on top of each other allows us to create something a little bit more closer to what we see on Google Maps on this area. Now unfortunately this area isn't precise to scale. The building itself should be more higher up and the, the whole area should be a little bit moved around here and there but I don't really have the time to do that and it's taken long enough to get to where we are today so you'll see a bit later on in episode 5 we do mess around with that. But anyway, here we are. This brings us to the end of episode five. A lot of detailing still left to do, as you can see, but the main construction of this area is now done. And you will notice in the cinematics, I do end up changing the plop of asphalt for a slightly different color, um, which I think looks a lot better once we put the decals on top. But anyway, guys, make sure if you haven't already, you've liked the video if you did enjoy it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already because there'll be more episodes coming as they do and of course your comments and feedback is always welcome but i've been pug gaming you've been watching project monaco i'll leave you all to it have a good weekend and i'll catch you all very very soon all the best